Hi everyone, welcome back. Today's video is about the follicular phase of the menstrual cycle. If you want to skip to any particular section of this video, you can do so by clicking the timestamps found in the description section below. Please also make sure to like and subscribe as this helps us out a lot. Okay, let's get to the video. The follicular phase is the initial stage of the menstrual cycle beginning on the first day of menstruation and ending with ovulation. Concurrent with menstrual phase, the follicular phase extends from day 1 to approximately day 14 on average. The follicular phase is characterized by the maturation of ovarian follicles and the preparation of the endometrial lining for potential implantation. Let's consider the hormonal landscape during the follicular phase. The follicular phase begins with menstruation, which is triggered by a decline in progesterone and estrogen levels from the previous cycle. The low levels of these hormones cause the endometrial lining to shed, resulting in menstrual bleeding. Low estrogen and progesterone activates the hypothalamus, and releases gonadotropin-releasing hormone in a pulsatile manner. Gonadotropin-releasing hormone then stimulates the anterior pituitary gland to secrete FSH and LH. Follicular-stimulating hormone is crucial for the recruitment and development of ovarian follicles, as was mentioned before. Multiple follicles begin to grow, but usually only one becomes the dominant follicle. This follicle is called the graphian follicle. The other follicles undergo atresia. LH also supports follicular growth and maturation, although its levels remain relatively stable during the early follicular phase. Towards the end of the follicular phase, rising estrogen levels prepare for the LH surge that will trigger ovulation later. As the dominant follicle matures, cells within the follicle produce increasing amounts of estrogen. The rise in estrogen levels regenerates the endometrial lining through cellular proliferation and thickening of the lining to prepare the body for ovulation. It is during this phase that the concept of positive and negative feedback become important. The amount of estrogen determines the type of feedback. Moderate levels of estrogen exert negative feedback on the pituitary gland, inhibiting further FSH release to ensure that only one dominant follicle continues to mature. When estrogen levels peak, they exert positive feedback on the hypothalamus and pituitary gland. This positive feedback results in a surge of gonadotropin-releasing hormone, which in turn triggers a surge of LH, setting the stage for ovulation. And that's it for this video. I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, please make sure to like and subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye.